So the NFL, but more importantly, the Philadelphia Eagles will be starting virtual OTAs this week. Now, you can soak up the playbook as much as you want, go through this, that, and the third over virtual meetings, Zoom chats, but when are these guys going to hit the grass? Like Doug Peterson said, we need. What is going on, everybody? If you don't already know, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. If you are new to the channel and love talking Philly sports every single day, hit that subscribe button. Now, if you feel like the NFL season is just going to be all right and we're going to start, there might not be no fans, but that's all that's going to happen. Smash that like button. And oh, by the way, it helps this content and pushes it out to other Philly fans. With all that being said, let's get into today's topic. Earlier today, Doug Peterson came out and talked about some touchy situation when it comes to the Eagles roster and rumors that have been going on in the Eagles organization. Let's start with the first one. Jason Peters. Now, a lot of people wanted Jason Peters back, and I understand he's one of the best Eagles ever, and what he was able to do at the left tackle position for that long, that strong, that style is fantastic, and I do believe he has gas left in the tank. But when we ask you guys, why do you want Jason Peters back? A lot of people think Andre Diller's not ready. And or they say Jason Peters on a one-year deal, he could play backup and mentor him. But will Jason Peters really do that? Do we know he will do that? Probably not. Oh, Jason Peters can play right guard or he can be there for depth. Are we sure that he would want to play as a backup? Maybe he has already said no, that he's not going to play as a backup. And some people say let him start and give Andre Dillard one more year on the bench. We've seen what that did for Andre Dillard. We know Andre Dillard needs to bulk up. We know that he's a little bit soft against the bull rush. But... Everything being said, we saw him do some good stuff in the league. He has a small sample size. On the right side, he is horrible. We know this, but we don't need him to play right side. We need him to play left side. We see him do good things against good competition. We've seen him give up some sacks. Yes, he's a young player. He's not going to come out and in the first year starting be as good as the Hall of Fame left tackle. He's not. But we do see signs that he can get better. We've seen signs that he can be that starting left tackle for the long-term future. And we got to make sure that it's not a small sample side and he's going to continue to grow and do that. That's including getting bigger and stronger and faster. But we got to see. Andre Dillard, we moved up for in the first round. And Doug Peterson said himself, the reason we moved up in the first round is because we believe in this guy and if you believe in this guy you got to show it now he played behind Jason Peters so all this mentoring that has already been given to him he needs to keep that up here all the technical stuff the hands this that and the third something that someone like Jason Peters can teach you that someone else couldn't just hall of fame information but the best way to learn is to be out there and do it. He's not going to really learn how to stop a bull rush until he keeps getting bull rush and he just gets bigger himself to not let that happen. He has to go through it. And with all that being said, I think he's done a good job when we prepared him as the starter. We're not talking about the games that Peters got hurt and he got tossed in real quick, unprepared, and don't got his mind right because some people, you have to get your mind right. Some people just can't come in and play at a high level. They got to prepare through the week knowing they're going to play. So... But all in all, I think Andre Dillard will be a great left tackle in this game. I'm not even going to say good. I think he will be great. But we can't expect him by week one, two, three to be Hall of Fame already. Give him some time. You couldn't have had a better situation learning behind Jason Peters and getting some reps to see what NFL is like. We've seen him against good competition, look good. And we've seen him get a little shaky, give up a sack or two, get bull rush. And this will help him build for the future. So... I love Jason Peters, and if he could help out any other way by not starting, I would probably consider it too. But Doug Peterson said we're going to go forward with Andre Diller, and I agree with it. 
I love Jason Peters, but I agree with it. As for the other thing that Doug Peterson spoke about was the backup quarterback situation. He started to talk about the way this offseason is going. We're going to need a veteran. He said Nate Sudfield to him is a veteran. He said he believes he has all the tools to succeed as the backup. He talked really highly of Nate, but then he started to bring it back a little bit when he talked about how good Jalen Hurts is learning the playbook and we don't know what this offseason is going to bring us because we've never been here before. This is unforeseen circumstance, so we just don't know. But he also said that nobody's going to get any position, like every position we have when it comes to running backs, wide receivers, even the backup quarterback situation is going to be fought for. So he left the door wide open for Jalen Hurts. I think as he was starting to put Nate Sudfield in that role, he remembered, oh wait, we used a second round pick on him. And if I say here right now that our second round pick is not a second stringer he's a third stringer it's going to look a lot worse now does Jalen Hurts need to work on his mechanics of course does he need to learn how to get through progressions and probably learn NFL defenses of course but the kid is dynamic and did big things at the college level even though he has to work on these things. As for Nate Sudfield coming out in the sixth round, we don't know what he got either. He's always been hurt and never been able to show what he has. So do I believe if an injury happened week two, it might be Nate Sudfield. If an injury happened week 10, it probably will be Jalen Hurst because I believe they're going to work with this kid throughout the year and come on. How much does it take to get better than Nate Sudfield? I'm playing. I really don't know what Nate Sudfield has, but Jalen Hurts with the dynamic of the way today's game's going and a mobile quarterback rolling them out, doing this, that, and the third, I would probably feel more comfortable with Jalen Hurts. But let's keep it quiet because Carson Wentz is playing all 16 games. We already know this. Lastly, I just want to touch on this virtual OTAs and I'm kind of really nervous. As I see the team set up, I see there's a lot of new pieces on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. And a lot of teams got their draft picks and are going to use them. But the way we're going to use our draft picks, Jalen Rager might be the second most productive receiver on the team. Could possibly be the first if something happens to Deshaun Jackson early. So the thing we're going to ask our rookie receiver to do is probably more than what Minnesota is going to ask Justin Jefferson to do or Dallas ask C.D. Lamb to do. So we got to prepare for that. And also, when you look at this defense, who I think is going to be a very fast, versatile defense who can do different things, we got new players in each level of the defense. A new defensive tackle, Javon Hargraves. Two new linebackers in Davion Taylor and Jatavius Brown, who we signed in the offseason. Jalen Mills moving to safety. Hasn't done that before in this system. Will Parks can play the safety, the nickel. He wasn't here last year. Nickel Roby Coleman, Darius Slay. So there's so many different pieces in the secondary, in the defense alone that is new that I want to see how they get that chemistry. And depending how far this thing goes, if we don't get no offseason until preseason, I don't know. I doubt it. And that's why I asked you yesterday on the community poll, how far do you think this is going to go? Because I do want these guys to get with their position groups. I do want these guys to get some chemistry. I mean, Carson Wentz throwing bombs to guys. He got to know their speed. He has to feel them out. He could just throw it up. These guys are probably going to run under it. But it's still good to get that connection. Jalen Rager, who had such a bad quarterback last year, who did certain things and should have got the ball thrown to him, didn't. I want him to feel that chemistry with Carson when he he runs a correct route and he breaks to the right, Carson's going to put the ball on him. When he sits inside his zone, Carson's going to put the ball on him. These are things I want to get that chemistry that we just not going to get unless for some reason something goes where they can practice together. I don't know. I just hope something gets done so the Eagles can get together at least a little bit before preseason. This preseason might be really big that we have to play more people we don't want to play if it goes down because we just got to get some chemistry going into the season. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. How far do you think it's going to go? This whole no OTAs, virtual OTAs, all the way up to this, that, and the third. And let me know what do you think is going to have a harder time coming together with less chemistry? The new defense or the new offense? And let me know all your thoughts. Appreciate it. You know what time it is. We out.